Salmon are often viewed as a resource. I think one of the best demonstrations of how the Nez Perce culture is integrated with salmon is the change in terminology, not as a resource, but one as a life source. My name is Jay Hesse. I have worked for the Nez Perce tribe as their director of biological services in their fisheries department for uh, the last 32 years. Salmon and steelhead are an integral part of the Nez Perce tribal uh, culture and, and history. Salmon and steelhead and Nez Perce people are really inseparable. It's more than a food source for the Nez Perce people and those salmon coming back. It, it ties back to their creation story and, and how salmon came forward and offered itself as, as a food source for the tribe. But in return, the Nez Perce have an obligation to care for salmon and nurture those fish uh, for, for the long term. when people ask, you know, how are fish doing? If I, if I communicate with my friends in town and, you know, it's kind of, you know, how's your job going? How, how are the fish doing? It seems like there's some people out there fishing and, you know, it's like, well, they're really not doing so well. And I get into big numbers and their eyes just glaze over. So how do you communicate that effectively in the question of how are they doing? And I've gotten to the point where it's, it's kind of simplified down to a common day picture of a 16 ounce beverage. So if you, you go out and you get your fancy coffee or your cold drink on a day like today, that 16 ounces uh, historically with a million fish would be full. It would have the whipped cream on top and salmon coming back to the basin uh, would be in high abundance. But today, with the 8,000 fish coming back, that cycle of nutrient transfer is, is really broken. So if you take that cup that was 16 ounces historically, it's only four and a half milliliters of, of fluid. It's not even enough to cover the bottom of the cup. What the collective science says is that uh, there are a number of limiting factors, climate change, predator changes, but the largest single impact that's anthropogenic or human is related to hydrosystem development in, in salmon. From where the Snake uh, River leaves the Idaho boundary and heads to the ocean is about 465 miles till getting to the ocean. Out of that historic 465 miles of river, Today, 325 miles of that is reservoirs. It's a series of eight reservoirs um, created by dams. But the, the science also says that eight dams, eight reservoirs is too much for Snake River salmon to handle and achieve healthy and abundant status. So what do, what do we need uh, in terms of getting back to healthy and abundant? The Nez Perce tribe, along with the other fisheries co-managers, have concluded that there's a suite of actions that are needed, habitat restoration, harvest management, hatchery management combined. But within that suite, if snake basin stocks of salmon and steelhead are going to achieve healthy and abundant, removal of the four lower snake dams and reeking that into a free-flowing river again is absolutely essential.